is Elimu Learning Simplified. My name is Eric. I'll be taking you through this topic, algebraic expressions. And for this lesson, we are going to look at factorization by grouping. So we have done factorization in the previous uh, lesson. But then you want to see what does it mean when you talk about factorization by grouping. So we have a few questions to help us illustrate what factorization by by grouping is all about so we'll go through these questions just to help us illustrate what we mean by factorization by grouping so we have a few examples here just to help with illustration so what does it mean so let's 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 look at this this is similar to what we did in the previous in the previous video or the previous lesson whereby you can see we have two terms here but then these two terms have got something in common or they have a common factor or highest common factors you were able to see in the previous lesson so here when you want to factorize you simply highlight the highest common factor which is two in this case and then you divide each of them each term by the highest common factor so for example we have two x divided by two two cancel two and the remaining number is x so 2x divided by 2 is x plus. Now 6, c squared. So we have we have 6, c squared, and then we are dividing by 2. So 2 goes here, 1, 2 goes into 2, into 6, 3 times. So 3 by c squared is 3c squared, 3c squared. So this is the factorized form of that expression, 2x plus 6c squared. It, it simplifies into 2 into x plus 3c squared. So we have another one here again you can see we have two terms and uh, both of them are having a common factor like the highest common factor here is 7y see 7y is the highest common factor here so you identify the the highest common factor and then you factor it out so you divide both terms by this 7y here Let's see so 7y squared over 7y this is equals to 7 times y times y y squared means y times y and of course we are dividing by 7 times y here so 7 cancels 7 y cancels y and then y remains so this is uh y so 7 y squared divided by 7 y is y plus 14 y divided by 7 y so 14 y divided by 7 y how do you arrive at the answer so this is 14 times y over 7 times y. So y cancels y, 7 here, 1, 7 there, 2 times. So the answer here is 2. So it means 17, I mean, 7 y squared plus 14 y simplifies into 7 y into y plus 2. So we have another example here. You see this one here again. It's just a matter of identifying the highest common factor. So normally you start with numbers. See, so which, which, which number is common? What is the highest common factor between 3, 9, and 12? That is 3. Then you move into M here. The, the first letter M. There is no M here, so that can't be common. Then you go into N. There is N, there is N, there is N squared. So the smallest one is the, the, the letter with the, with the smallest power is n it means the common factor here the highest common factor between this this and this is 3n then now what remains is dividing each term by that uh, highest common factor which is 3n see so again we have 3mn and we are dividing by 3n so this is equals to 3 times m times n divided by 3 by n so n cancels n 3 once and then we have m the answer here is m plus now again we need to divide 3n here by i mean 9n divided by 3n so 9n divided by 3n should be equal to 9 times n over 3 times n so n cancels n 3 here 1 3 there 3 so what remains is 3 so that is 3 plus 4n squared so we have 4 i mean 12n squared so we have 12n squared divided by 3n again that is going to be 12 times n times n divided by 3 times n so 3 comes uh, n cancels n 
3 here, 1, 3 there, 4. So 4 and n. So that is 4, 4n. Four so that expression simplifies into, uh, it simplifies to 3n into m plus 3 plus 4n. So look at this now. So when it comes to this, you are not able to see a common factor. Now we look at all these numbers. Other than 1, what is the other common factor here? You're not able to find it. So in this case, you have to, to do grouping. You know, So you can group them. So let's say, and as you try to group them, make sure they have something in common. Like these ones here, do they have anything in common? Nothing other than 1. So maybe I'll try group this AX and A. At least they have something in common. There is A. So I'll have AX plus A. And then uh, plus B, plus BX. So you see, I've regrouped them. So this one is grouped with the other one. So you group them in pairs. You see, I've done that because if you try to check across, there is no highest common factor other than one. So in that case, you try to group them. So if you group them, we have now A, X, and A having something in common. B and BX also having something in common. So this first pair here, what is common here? So what's common in the first pair is A. As we did in the previous case, we need to divide each term again by the highest common factor between the two. So we have AX and we are dividing by A. So A cancel A and what remains there is X. So this is X plus A divided by A definitely. That is 1 plus now common factor here is B. So B into. Now we need to divide each of them by the each of them by the common factor which is b so b divided by b is one and bx now divided by b should be equal to b times x and then b so b cancels b and then we have x so if you look at now this first bracket here the first bracket and the second bracket they tend to resemble so we'll ap apply something called commutative property of addition where the order does it matter and you say 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. So, of addition, where the order, we, it doesn't matter which, which number is coming first as you add. So, that means I have A, X, I'll use 1, plus X, just the same as X plus 1, plus B into 1 plus X again. Now, this bracket is the same as this bracket. So, that brings us into something very interesting here. That when you have... Uh, when you have 4x and then you are adding 3x, when this is the same as this, you simply add the coefficient. So you have 4 plus 3, and then you maintain the, the letter there, you see, or the factor there. So that is going to be 7x, you see. If you have 3m plus 2m, you simply pick the coefficient. This is 5m, which is 3 plus 2, and then you use one of the letters, you know, m that way. So this is going to give us 5m. So that's what I want us to apply. So assume this is m. So I will only add these two, and then I maintain one of them, one of the brackets. So a plus b, and then I maintain one of the brackets. So a plus b here is like my 2 plus 3 plus 2 here. And then now 1 plus x is like the m there. So this is the factorized form of that expression. So let's see again, if you look at this again, there is no common factor all through, a number that can divide all of them other than one. So in this case, then it's advisable that you group. So let's let's try and group the first pair and the second pair. Do they have anything in common? Yes, they do. Like there is B here, there is B there, there is C and there is C. So that then qualifies them to be factorized in that form. So we have the common factor is B, and then I need to divide each of the terms by that b so the first one is 3ab so you have 3ab and then you are dividing by b so b cancels b and you multiply it here so 3 by a by b and then you divide by b so b cancels b and then you have 3a so 3ab divided by b is 3a 2b again you have to do that for 2b so 2b over b should be 2 by b over b so b cancels b and then i have 2 Plus, again, this one, the common factor here, any, the, 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 the highest common factor here is C into, then I divide both of them by both terms by that C. 
So I have 3CA over C should be equal to 3 times C times A over C. So C cancels C and then I have 3 by A which is 3A. That means that 3CA divided by C is 3A plus 2C over C. This is 2 times C over C. So C cancels C and then you have 2. So again, you can see the two brackets are the same. This bracket and the other bracket, they're the same. So what you do now, you only pick the coefficients you add and then you use one of the brackets, like we did in the previous case. So we have B plus C multiplied by 3A plus 2. That becomes the simply the, the factorized form of that whole expression up there. Now the last one again you can you can see again you can't find an, a common factor other than one you see so again you can try and group them as you group them make sure they have at least something in common you see like maybe i can try group this and this because they have a in common so i have a b minus a and then plus b c minus c at least there is a, something in, uh, something common between the two so now here the first pair and the second pair i have What's common is A. I need to divide each term by A. So the first term is AB. And then I'm dividing by A. So this is A times B over A. So A cancels A I have. The answer is B. It means AB divided by A is B. Minus A divided by A, of course, is 1. I have a number divided by the same number. The answer is 1. Plus, again, common factor here is C. So C into. What is common is what you factor out. We call it factoring out. Then you divide both terms by C. So I'm dividing BC first. This first term is BC, and then, and then I divide it by C. That is B times C over C. So C cancels C. I have B remaining. So it means BC divided by C is B minus, of course, C divided by C is 1. Number divided by the same number is 1. So you see the two brackets are again the same. So it's the same case as 3M plus 2M, where you just add the coefficients and you maintain one, one letter. You see. So I'll assume this is my M. So this is going to be 3 plus 2. And then you maintain m which is 5m so that's what i'm going to do here i'm just going to add 3 and c so a i mean a here and c so a plus c and then you maintain one bracket which is my m now so b minus one okay so that is the factorized form of the whole expression up there you see you see it's all about factorization is all about introduction of brackets and that is basically what we are doing so that is all I have a few questions here to help you practice on the same thing that I've, I've been doing up there. Should you have any questions, you can always ask on the comment section and be able to give feedback in the due course. Otherwise, that marks the end of our lesson for today. Until next time, goodbye.